Using Garmin Basecamp isn't so difficult after all, is it? In the last two videos, you learned how to create and modify routes. Now, let's look at waypoints. Hi, welcome back. I'm Yishimoto Tim. In the last two videos, we created and modified routes, but we didn't pay much attention to waypoints. In this video, we'll look more closely at waypoints. Here in Basecamp, I have a route set up to illustrate the various kinds of points in a route. Let's open the Route Details box by double-clicking the route. Now we have points along the route from the beginning to the destination. There are several terms used to classify these points. All of the points in the route are via points because the route goes via each point. They could also be called waypoints because the route goes by way of those points. Some of the points in the route list have icons and some have black dots. The black dots are points or addresses on a road. The icons represent a point of interest or a POI. Now look and see that in the catalog list on the left, some of the points are listed in the catalog and the rest are not. Let's call the points that are in the catalog listed waypoints and the ones that are not are unlisted waypoints. Take another look at the points in the route list. Some of them say won't alert and the others do not. Well, what does that mean? Garmin calls the ones that won't alert shaping points because they shape the route. But just like waypoints that do alert, they force the GPS to take you to those points. Now, newer Garmin GPSs can distinguish between waypoints and shaping points. These newer GPSs will not display a flag or announce when you get to a shaping point. But older models display flags and alert everything that's in the list. You can change the alert status of any of the points by right-clicking Alert on Arrival or right-clicking Don't Alert on Arrival. But the starting waypoint and the destination waypoint, you cannot change the alert status. They will always be announced. Let's look at three ways to add new listed waypoints to our catalog. The first way, we click the new waypoint icon. And then wherever we click, it will create a waypoint. This is on a street, so it's a listed waypoint that's an address. Or we can click on a POI icon. So now the Dairy Queen point of interest has been added to our catalog list. Now remember to go back to the hand because every time you click, you'll create a new waypoint. The second way is to right-click on a road and select New Waypoint. That creates a listed waypoint address. You can also right-click New Waypoint on a POI or icon, and that creates a listed waypoint in our catalog. The third way is via the search. We'll go to Find, Find Options. We're going to search from the center of view for a point of interest. And I'm picking Lodging and Hotel Motel from the drop-down list. Then I click Search. 
and we have our results listed here. They're numbered 1, 2, 3, and there are numbers on the map that corresponds. I'll click on the first one, and in this box we have the choice of new waypoint, create a new route from this point, or add it to the current route. I'm going to just create a new point, new waypoint, and it's listed in our catalog. So that's the third way of creating new listed waypoints. And then you can close the search box with this X here. There's additional information attached to each of these listed waypoints. If you double click on a listed waypoint, it brings up this box that has additional information. This one has the name, its chevron, and its address and phone number. And you can also change any of this information. For instance, let's go to the address 956 Birmingham and change the symbol. Now, the symbol is in the civil section. We can change it to a residence. And we can change the name of it. And it makes the change in the list, changes the icon and the name shown in the list, in the catalog. Let's create a Waypoints catalog for points we may reuse. Let's begin here and create a folder and call it Waypoints Catalog. Then let's create two lists, one for cities and one for hotels. Now with cities active, let's do a search first for Tucum Carry, New Mexico. Here it is in the list. And we have cities active, so we'll add that to our cities list. Then let's search for Gallup, New Mexico. Here it is here. Cities is active. We'll create the new catalog. Now let's go back to Tucum Carry. Highlight it. Zoom in with Control D. Hit the gear icon to bring up the options and we'll change it to points of interest. Change it to lodging and hotel motel and search. We have five results. We click on the three dots. And now we have here the Blue Swallow Motel where I have stayed before. It's an old time motel with garages. You can park your motorcycle in a garage. Let's highlight the hotels list and create the new waypoint in our hotels list. Then go back to cities, highlight Gallup. Control D to zoom in and then click on the circular arrow to search for hotels in Gallup. And here's the El Rancho where I've stayed. It's a famous old hotel. And click hotels so that that's active and create the new waypoint in that list. Let's recap. We looked at waypoints in a route, and they can be called via points or waypoints. We have waypoints that are listed in the catalog and others that are unlisted. We have waypoints that will alert and others that won't alert. The ones that won't alert are called shaping points. Next, we looked at three ways to create new waypoints. We used the waypoint 
tool and clicked on the map on a road or on an icon. Or we, the second way, we could right click on a road or on an icon and select new way, waypoint. The third way was to do a search, select one of the items in the search, and click on create a new waypoint. There you go, waypoints demystified in Basecamp. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please leave a comment and a thumbs up so YouTube will suggest this video to others. In the next video, we'll see three ways to add waypoints to a route and combine what we've learned to build a multi-day route. If you want to support this channel, please visit the Amazon pages on my website where I have affiliate links to products I use. Also, many thanks to those who have bought me a cup of coffee on buymeacoffee.com. In any case, I appreciate your support and all the positive comments. I'll see you in the next video.